Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Back at the end of last year, I made a prediction about this year, 2022, and I felt that it was going to be a uniquely challenging year. From uh, issues with uh, geopolitical sorts of tensions starting to boil, uh, energy issues, fuel issues, delivery and transportation issues, environmental issues, you name it, pretty much everything is starting to come to a boil this year. And what I want to talk about in this video is addressing the issues that we have in our preps and our preparedness. For some of you guys that watch my channel, you've been doing it for a while. I've been doing prepping and preparedness for about two decades, and I feel like I'm in a pretty good place at the moment. I know not everybody is there, and it's always great to do something today, and I advocate for that on my channel all the time. It's never too late to start prepping and preparing. You know, something that you do today is better than something that you wait to do tomorrow. Uh, yesterday would have been better, but if you didn't do things yesterday and you're dealing with today, do what you can today, but it really is the 11th hour at this point, and it is doubtful that if you are just in the entry stages of prepping and preparedness, that you're gonna to get to a point where you're, you know, someone like me that's got like a fallout shelter that's already to go and you've got a huge pantry and all this kind of stuff. Uh, it takes a while to get there. It's not just about buying things. You know, it's great to get provisions, food, medicine, you know, the tools for self-defense if that's something that you're interested in. You know, it's good to get all those things, but there's other stuff like skills that you, you, you can't just run out and like, you know, it's like, in the, the film The Matrix, they like stab a thing in the back of their head and like 10 seconds later, I know Kung Fu. Uh, you know, th some of these things they take trial and error and years to master. So we are where we are, you are where you are. And the world is where it is, which is like I mentioned, kind of it like the 11th hour. And it is time to start thinking of a plan for what you are going to do over the remainder of this year as we face continued environmental issues which are ruining crops, which are uh, you know, uh, you know, creating fire, uh, wildfires and floods. Uh, the environmental issues alone, and I know a lot of people just don't believe that they're real, but you know, you don't have to believe in rain to go out in a rainstorm and get wet. You can, you can be standing out there in the rain and it can be drenching you, and you, know, you can say it doesn't exist or it's created by some Chinese hoax or whatever as much as you like, you're still gonna get wet whether you believe in it or not. And these challenges are coming. We faced so many of these environmental issues over the past you know, several years, you know, several decades, uh, but we've always been saved by something. And quite frequently what we've been saved by is we'll have a massive crop failure in one part of the world, but another part of the world will have kind of a boom year. And one of those uh, areas that tends to have boom years that save the rest of the world has been Russia. Well, what do you think is going to happen this year if we have some major uh, food crises, you know, major crop failures? You know, how likely is Russia going to be to want to bail out the world without wanting something in return for that? Uh, you know, it just, I, I've been saying for years that it, it, it's just going to take one year where we have not just one major thing that happens, but two at the same time, because our, our way of life, our system is so frail, is so thin that just two things happening, one thing happening has been enough to like throw our world upside down. But all our world really needs to go completely nuts is to have two things happen simultaneously. And this is a very good candidate for the year, something like that is going to happen. We've got uh, trucking and shipping issues. We have fuel uh, issues. We have power grid issues that are coming down the road and all these geopolitical issues that we, we mentioned. And if this is a year where things start going sideways, you need to have some kind of a plan, even if you're not ready for it. Uh, and I mean, yeah, it'd be great if you, you, know, you and I and everyone else in the entire world had started this journey 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and we were at a point now when it really wasn't that big of a deal. But the fact of the matter is the majority of people did not prepare for it. And even a lot of people that are preparing now have only started recently. So it's it's doubtful that they'll get to a point where they have kind of everything, you know, all the ducks in a row, so to speak. So you need to have some kind of a backup plan. Yes, go out today, get those kind of provisions, you know, learn what kind of skills you can. You know, people always pass on the skills videos. They just want to watch the doom and gloom videos. This is kind of a doom and gloom video. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, people don't like learning skills because skills take work, they take time, and uh, you know, people are lazy. They don't like putting that kind of uh, time investment in, especially for something that they have been convinced by society that they're never going to use. So, what do you do? Well, you need to have some kind of a backup plan. In films and Hollywood and cinema, you know, the backup plan for people is always that they like, you know, put a, a pistol in, on their hip and throw a backpack on and walk down some desolate dirt road with epic adventure music playing in the background. Um, that's beautiful, that's very cinematic, but that's not reality. Reality is, you know, nowhere near as exciting, nowhere near as beautiful, uh, nowhere near as epic as that, you know. Uh, 
Is it the is it T.S. Eliot, the poem, you know, this is how the world ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper? That really is true. That is the way that things tend... I don't know if it's... Tell me if it's T.S. Eliot in the, in, the, in the comments below. I, I can't remember if I'm attributing that correctly. But, I mean, that is the way that it tends to go. It's like, you know, we, we imagine in our fiction, our literature, our films, that, you know, things go in an epic way, that there's, a, you know, an explosive end and there's a crescendo and there's, a, you know, a hero's journey. But more often than not, you know, you, you get some kind of waterborne disease and you start, you know, puking out of both ends and then you, like, die in your sleep at some point. You know, because you're, you know, starving and you're cold. You got to have some kind of a plan. If you are in a, a situation where, if the grid goes down, if society ceases to uh, provide you with the life support that you need, if you live in a situation where that's a problem, you need to figure out a way where that won't be a problem. It's as simple as that. Uh, you need to have some kind of a plan, and it's going to be unique to different people. Uh, you know, for me, I've got a pretty good setup here. A lot of people are going to probably be coming here. If you know people like me, you have to start laying the groundwork with people like that and, you know, feel out what is the situation if you were to show up at their place. If you live in an apartment somewhere and the grid goes down and you can't heat that apartment and it is the middle of winter and you're going to die in that apartment because you can't, you know, you can't light a fire, you can't warm yourself in, in any way, you need to have some sort of a way of preserving your life and it's probably going to rely on, uh, you know, depending on people that maybe had either a little bit more plan for this or are just in a situation where they can adapt to it a little better. You know, generally that tends to be people who live out in the country. And I know I've kind of glorified country living here on my channel. I love it. You know, I think it's a wonderful place to live, even if the world were going absolutely perfectly and humans were really great at managing themselves and getting along well with others. Uh, you know, even if I wasn't having my concerns about living in a densely uh, populated urban environment for, you know, safety reasons and collapse reasons and all that, it's just wonderful out here. I would choose this, you know, one way, you know, no matter what. So you may know people that live out in a country setting, and it's you. It's usually easier in those sorts of environments to do things like, uh, you know, heat your home with wood if they have like a wood stove or something like that, or a fireplace. It's easier to get rid of human waste if you live in an apartment and the plumbing's not working. Your toilet is frozen up into just a chunk of ice. You know, how are you going to get rid of human waste out here in the country? It's no big deal. It's like. It's nature's bathroom, wherever you want to go. Just, you know, you go to the edge where people don't tend to walk, and I tend to prefer not to pee on things that I might plan on eating, wild edible plants. Usually the base of trees are a great place because it kind of fertilizes a tree, and people aren't, don't tend to really step at the base of a tree. So, oh, you know, getting rid of waste is easier out here. But the point is, think about what resources you have in your life. What, people resources you have in your life because if you are not in a situation where you've got yourself to that situation that you feel is required for the challenges uh, uh, you know ahead of us you may not have time to get there yourself and you may need to call in the help and assistance of others and those people speaking for myself are gonna be much more if it's family, they'll probably be willing to take you in either way, but they'll probably be much more happy to take you in if there's been some sort of a conversation ahead of time about the possibility of that happening. Okay, I just wanted to jump in for a second because I wanted to say don't sell yourself short. We're talking about kind of syncing up with a family member or a friend or something like that, somebody that maybe lives in a better uh, location than you, but it, that might seem like you're kind of like in the situation of being a beggar where you're like, you know, approaching them, it's like your 1950s hat, and it's like, please, uh, could you please spare a bit? You know, it doesn't have to be that kind of a situation. You know, you would be approaching them and uh, you represent a lot of benefits to them as well. Uh, you know, in depending on what your skill set is, it could be, uh, you know, really, really meaningful. First, just the fact that you're a human being with eyes and ears is a real valuable commodity to someone that's living in a place that, you know, may not have that many people living there. And if we are in a situation where maybe rule of law is a little bit um, less friendly than it has been, uh, you know, over the past, uh, you know, many decades, you know, having extra people that can be uh, alert, on watch, you know, up at night and things like that, you know, that represents a, an enormous uh, benefit that you would be pr providing these people, even if you don't have any skills, uh, you know, whatsoever outside of that. And, you know, maybe you have skills, you know, maybe you know how to operate a tractor, maybe you know how to cook or bake or clean things or, you know, whatever, or you can pick up skills from that person and be an extra set of hands, you know, you might also be able to bring resources with you. You know, maybe you don't live in a place that's great to uh, try to survive a grid down situation. You know, if you're in an apartment, you know, the grid goes down, you, you know, everything freezes up, you don't have water, you don't have heat, you don't have anything. 
you know, but you could have a lot of food, so you could be bringing food to, uh, you know, to this person's location. So don't look at yourself as though you're some beggar looking for a handout. You might have a lot of materials you can bring with you. You may have a lot of skills that you can bring with you. And even barring any of that, like I said, you're another human being. You've got eyes, you've got ears, you have the ability to learn, hopefully. And you could be an enormous asset to this person during this very dif difficult time for both of you guys. Okay, let's go back to my diatribe about doom and gloom. And they can talk to you back and forth about, well, if you're coming, make sure you bring X, Y, and Z. You know, I don't have enough blankets for you, so make sure you bring your blankets. Don't just show up with nothing. Obviously, you'd want to bring as much food and, you know, all those sorts of things that, that, that you could. But, you know, start having conversations with people now because we are in those 11th hours, I think. Th this year is a year where it's very likely for something to happen. Practically every year for the past couple decades, there has been a, some sort of major catastrophe that could have taken us down if not for some other part of the system which was working really well at the time. Well, at this point, the entire system is not working very well, and if we just have two or, God forbid, three major things that happen on top of each other, whew, yeah. Start prepping now because tick, 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 I don't think we have that much more time left. That's it. Doom and gloom video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.